You know, we hear all the time about how important earthworms are for the soil and for the garden, but why? And if you don't have any in your garden, how do you get more of them? That's what we're talking about in today's video. Kevin Espiritu here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. Now, did you know that Charles Darwin, the man behind the theory of evolution himself, spent the latter years of his life studying earthworms, and actually the last book he ever published was this one right here, Darwin's classic on earthworms, the last book Charles Darwin wrote. This classic on earthworms was a bestseller in that day from the start, selling just as many copies as his book on the origin of species. That's pretty crazy, but he was onto something. He was a master observer and he was looking at earthworms doing all sorts of experiments and really theorizing behind their role in soil, in the ecosystem, and by extension, in the garden. In this video, we're gonna talk about what worms do, why that's so important, how to get more of them with a few key tips, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you a bit of a worm factory that I have to kind of speed up some of those beneficial things that worms do. So without further ado, cultivate that like button, and both myself and Charles Darwin will bless you with an epic amount of worms in your garden, and let's get into the video. Straight out of the gate, what do worms do? in the soil? What's the point of their existence? Well, their point is to survive, to eat, to reproduce, and create more worms. And the way they do that is they burrow through your soil, munching on stuff. They use grit that's also present in the soil to sort of digest, in a sense, that food. It comes out the other end in the form of worm castings or worm poop, which basically just breaks organic matter from larger to smaller pieces. And really, at that point, that organic matter can start getting attacked by soil microbes, bacteria, fungi, all sorts of stuff that then break it down further into the components, the elemental nutrients that can be absorbed by your plants and thus you can get an amazing epic harvest and all that's being done by worms for you. Another nice thing they do for us is their bodies as they move through create air tunnels, air pockets that help loosen and aerate the soil, but also their excretions help create more soil aggregation, not like this sort of sandy, crumbly soil or overly chunky clay soil. They sort of break it up into these nice, sizable particles that is really the structure of healthy, healthy soil. There are three categories of worms, roughly speaking. There are thousands of species, but there are three buckets that they all fall into. You have your litter or surface worms. If I threw maybe a couple inches of mulch on top of this bed of onions here, surface worms would be living in between the mulch and the surface of the soil. Then you have your topsoil worms. They live, if the surface of the soil is right about here in this bed, they would probably live within two to four inches of the surface. Then you have your subsoil worms. Those can actually make vertical burrows five, six feet down. And so worms are at play, different species and different sort of groups of worms are at play throughout the entirety of your soil. And that's why it's so important to have a variety of them and have soil that supports them, which is exactly what we're getting to next. To figure out how to encourage more worms in our soil, we must think like a worm. We must become the worm. <sighs> okay, I've channeled the inner essence and the inner spirit of an earthworm and I know what they want. When it comes to soil, relatively cool soil, they don't like high temperatures in their soil. You're gonna to wanna to keep it nice and moist, but not too dry, not too wet. Too dry, worms are 80% water. They're going to dry out along with the soil. They kind of play the game that they're dealt. Too wet, you're gonna notice that the soil, the pores, the air pockets in the soil all fill up and then the worms have nowhere to go. And that's why when it rains, worms come to the surface because they literally need to breathe. As far as the soil pH, you don't want anything too far out of range. In a perfect world, they want a neutral to slightly alkaline pH, it seems, but they can tolerate a range of five to eight. When it comes to the actual texture of the soil, a sandy loam is best, it's optimal, at least for most species of worms, but they can make do with mostly what they're given. Too much clay, it's hard for them to work through, and of course too sandy, it just water pours through and it's very hard for them to stay alive in that type of soil. Some other tips that you can use to concretely improve the ecosystem in your garden for your worms. 
use a no or low dig approach, meaning you're not disturbing the soil in your beds all too often because that's going to disrupt the path and pattern of the worms. You may be bringing some up to the surface that don't like being on the surface. They might dry out and die. So I would adopt that low or no dig approach. If you'd like good instruction on that, my friend Charles Dowding, the master of the no dig movement, one of the big popularizers of that movement, he spends about two inches of compost once per year on his garden beds and he does not disturb them. He just lays it right on top and that's it. I have a full tour with Charles on my channel. It's actually one of my favorite videos I've ever made on this channel. I went all the way to England and we got that video done and it was amazing to meet him. So I highly recommend you check that out if that's something you're interested in. Another thing you can do is leave some of the organic matter that naturally falls on the garden, leave it there. Remember, a mulch layer, a leaf litter layer, something like that is going to encourage those surface or litter worms to exist, right? Otherwise, there's nothing protecting them from the blinding sun and the elements, so they're not going to be there. And so that's a whole class of worms you would miss out on in your garden. Our final tip before we get into my worm factory is just use less synthetic fertilizers. I don't think many of us watching this channel use a whole ton of synthetics, but it's going to be a little bit harder for the worms to work with that. They don't really prefer that. Give them nice, organic, high quality compost and manures, stuff like that. They're gonna work through that like magic and use less synthetics. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why you would wanna use less synthetics anyways. Okay, now let's talk about the worm system. For those of you who wanna supercharge your worm game, you can actually add a worm composting system. This makes use of typically red wiggler worms, which are those litter worms that live more at the top of a soil system. And the one that I particularly like is this one called the Urban Worm Bag. My friend Steve, he's actually an airline pilot, and this is what he does in his spare time, which is an amazing thing. It's just a hilarious combination. But he's an amazing guy, and he came up with this system, which is basically a continuous flow-through worm bin. Most classic worm bins are a tote system where you stack different trays, and as you move your worms, you kind of move the trays. This one, as you can see, it's one continuous unit. So food goes in the top, worms exist right at that top layer, and their castings start aggregating down here. To harvest, then all I do is I open this little drawstring, almost like an actual butt, <laughs> the worm poop comes out, and then I can harvest that and mix that into my beds as a top dressed amendment. As you can see, I have some worm tea that has brewed itself almost down here from a recent rain, and I can use this in my garden as well. Now, let's take a quick peek under the hood and just kind of show you some of the magic. Before we open it, I just want to be clear. This is not a way to add more earthworms to your soil. It's a way to harness the power of worms to create fertility for free from food scraps from your garden. So now, let's open it up. So you can see some of these worms are hanging out on the sides. Most of them are in this clump right here, somewhere right around there. You can see as soon as they hit the light, they really don't like that. These are surface worms, but they don't like to live actually on the surface. And I threw some Mizuna in here a little bit ago, and you can see it's been worked through quite, quite aggressively. And so what happens here is you mix some bedding, here's just some shredded cardboard, and your food scraps, your coffee grounds, and really they make a quick work of it. They can eat about a quarter of their body weight a day, and then it just matriculates its way down here, you can see probably I would say from about here downwards is all pure worm castings that I need to harvest. And then I can continue and just fill, 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 fill. And the beauty is the worm poop down here is not full of worms because they don't like to exist in their own poop down here. So they're always at the top. That's why this bottom harvest is so beautiful. There we have it everyone. Simple ways to encourage an ecosystem that worms love so that they show up in the garden, they start turning over that soil, doing all those beneficial things that we talked about, giving your plants the nutrition that they need so that they grow healthy and you have amazing harvests. If you want, I'm more than happy to do an in-depth breakdown of the Urban Worm Bag sometime, just so let me know in the comments if you like that. I've tried five, maybe six of the top rated bags or bin systems in existence, and I've even built my own, and this one is far and away my favorite. The owner, Steve, is an amazing guy, and I love it so much that I carry it now in the Epic Gardening store. Price is inclusive of shipping. It's one of the best values, in my opinion, you're going to get for your gardening dollar. So I'll leave that in the description. But 
until next time, I really hope this helped you and I'd love to see you in the comments and I'd love the comments to be collaborative. So if you have a question and you know the answer to someone's question, make sure and answer it so we can build a nice epic gardening community and I'll see you on the next video. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.